move on to this. Okay, so uh, let's do a brief run through on what we'll be talking about today. Uh, basically, for the basics, um, we will learn on how to identify replacement effects and how do we apply them. And uh, we'll also be going into uh, applying multiple replacement effects. Uh, we'll have a bit of focus on enter the battlefield replacement effects. And finally, uh, we also have a brief section on you know, how do we answer player questions. Uh, this is especially important uh, in this time when players have question, uh, when you don't get to meet a player face to face and you have to answer the questions online and you have uh, you know, other people chiming in, especially when you're asking on a public platform. So anyway, before we uh, move uh, move on to the presentation itself, uh, I'd like to introduce myself a bit uh, for those who don't know me. All right, my name is uh, Z Tan Zian. I'm a level two from Malaysia, and I've been judging since 2012. My first GP was GP Singapore in 2013. And I at first I didn't want to join Judge Academy, but eventually, like with two more weeks left to go, I eventually signed myself up. I couldn't resist the temptation of foils. And so, yeah, that's where I am now. Uh, you've probably seen me, uh, seen my work before. Uh, I am the artist behind the Judge Tokens project, which has unfortunately been uh, dormant since uh, Throne of Eldraine. I haven't gotten around to do it uh, after Judge Academy. All right, so that's uh, briefly on myself, and let's go on. Okay, let's start with definitions. What is, what is a replacement effect? Sometimes when it gets too wordy, I'll, I'll just use RE. So if you hear me say RE is replacement effect, but I'll try to say replacement effect as much as possible. Okay, so uh, where do we find replacement effects in the uh, comprehensive rules? Uh, we can look at entries 614 to 616. If you have an app, you can just uh, briefly look at them now. And if you don't have the app, you can install them. And yeah, you can spend the next 40 minutes reading, reading through these three entries, and that'll be the end of my presentation. Not actually, I should be presenting. Falls but not so easy, huh? All right, so let's go on. Okay, uh, replacement effects can be continuous effects, and they may not be replacement effects. Okay, so uh, most of the non-continuous effects are what we call self-replacement effects. Uh, we will look at them later. They only apply to the certain spell or ability that uh, uh, as, as they resolve. All right. So uh, replacement effects, they sit around and wait for an event to happen. Okay. Sounds kind of familiar, isn't, isn't it? You know, uh, it, it's, it sounds sort of like triggered abilities. Uh, as, as in the sit around and wait for an event to happen. Okay, let's uh, take a quick look at example uh, of uh, a replacement effect over here. Okay, so let's look at this card from M21, Conclave Mentor. Okay. Conclave, Mentors, Conclave, Conclave Mentor says, if one or more plus one counters would be put on a creature you control, that many plus one, plus one counters are put on that creature instead. You can see that it's worded slightly differently from a triggered ability, and we will go into that later. But uh, just a brief one, uh, you will know that it is a replacement effect, especially by this word instead. Uh, when you see the word instead, it means that it replaces something from the original effect, and it will take over as uh, and this particular effect will take over. All right, and okay, uh, unlike triggers, they don't, they don't use the stack and they don't generate priority. Nobody can respond to a replacement effect. Okay, uh, when I mean don't generate priority, it means that uh, they, they don't cause any priority passes to happen. Okay, uh, like as I said just now, uh, players won't be able to respond to these abilities. Okay, and replacement effects, they will partially or completely replace an event. Okay, anything that isn't replaced will stay, at its, stay as it is. Okay, uh, let's take a look at a quick example here. Okay, uh, we have two cards here. Divine Visitation, it's an enchantment that says, if one or more creature tokens would be created under your control, that many 4-4 white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. 
Okay, so like as I mentioned just now, we see the word instead. Okay, we know that this is a replacement event. Okay, you also happen to control Legion War Boss, okay, which is a creature that creates a one-one goblin token as haste and must attack each turn. Uh, sorry, and must attack that combat if able. Okay, so what happens when you have these two on the battlefield? Okay, so. As you can see, okay, uh, Divine Visitation's replacement effect will replace this, create a 1-1 one, one red Goblin creature token. But will the token have to attack? That's my question. Okay, Let's see. Huh? Okay. So right now, uh, pop quiz, uh, just to make sure that everyone's still here. Okay. Uh, what do you think? Okay. Do Must this angel creature token created by Legion War Boss have to attack? I'll be launching the poll for 30 seconds. Okay, anyone uh, still in front of the screen can answer. Do you think that this uh, this angel token created by Legion War Boss have to attack? Okay, you have 10 seconds more to go. Right, let's take a look at the results, huh? Okay. Oh, share results. Okay, there you go. All right, so 30, 30, of, 30 of you, uh, 71% said yes, the angel must attack, and 29% or 12 of you said no, the angel must attack. Uh, the angel doesn't need to have to attack. Okay, so remember what, what we said earlier, okay? Uh, sorry, yeah, there you go. Okay, uh, maybe let's close this, okay? Uh, Replacement effects, they partially or completely replaces an event. So what event is this Divine Visitation replacing? Okay. It replaces the act of okay, creating the token. So instead of creating a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token, uh, Legion War Boss effect will look something like this. Okay, I sub 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 this in here. Da -da -da -da. Okay. So instead of creating a 1-1 one, one goblin token, it will create a 4-4 four, four white angel creature token with Divine Vigilance. All right, so only that thing is replaced. Everything else uh, remains. That token, okay, re which refers to the token that uh, Legion War was created, okay, it still gains haste and it still has to attack. Okay, so uh, the answer is uh, your angel token will have to attack. Okay, moving on. What's going on? Okay, so let's look at a, a corner case of this. When we say that we uh, replacement effects partially or completely replaces uh, replace an event. Okay, let, let's look at corner case. Okay, uh, 614.11b says, if an effect would have a player both draw a card and perform an additional action on the card, and that draw is replaced, okay? So the entire effect of, uh, the entire additional effect of the draw is replaced, okay? And the action won't be performed, okay? Uh, I, I mentioned this corner case because there is a new card in uh, the latest set, Zendikar Rising, uh, that caused a bit of problem. Let's look at it. Okay. The card is Jace Mirror Mage. Okay. If you look at Jace Mirror Mage, uh, the second ability, it says draw a card and reveal it. Okay. Remove a number of loyalty counters equal to that card's converted amount of cost from Jace Mirror Mage. So if you control Jace and uh, Teferi's Ageless Insight, which says if you draw a card, except for the first one, you would draw in each of the draw steps, draw two cards instead. If you control these two permanents, what happens when you activate Jace's second loyalty ability? So instead of just replacing this draw card, it will actually, uh, this, this particular rule will actually replace the entire effect here. Okay? So instead of drawing a card, you change to draw two cards and you don't have to reveal it because the entire action is replaced by uh, this corner case. So uh, nothing will be revealed and you'll just draw two cards. Uh, so this is a combo uh, for anyone who, who, uh, who doesn't know about it. All right. Moving on. Okay. Uh, finally, we see that replacement effects happen only once. Okay? They will only uh, they will see one event and they will only 
happen once. Okay. Example is if we if we have if you control two thought reflections, okay, and you cast golden egg, golden egg enters the battlefield, and you get to draw a card. So each thought reflection here, they will only replace this draw card event only once. So, okay. so instead of drawing a card, you draw two cards, you times two, you draw another two cards, you times two. So in the end, you get you get to draw four cards. Okay. Instead of oh thought replacing replacing it from draw to draw two, the other thought replacement says oh okay let's 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 replace that again. First thought replacement goes back to double double double. It, it, it doesn't go on. Okay, so. Uh, they themselves are not events by themselves, but they replace other events. I hope that was uh, clear. <laughs> All right, so now that we know what a replacement effect is, okay, let's go on to find out how we identify replacement effects. Okay, so uh, if if you if you are actually reading through the comprehensive rules, please don't. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking here. Uh, Yeah, never mind. Sorry. Um, yeah. So uh, the order will be a bit different in what the comprehensive rules are, uh, are presenting. So uh, I'm jumping around a bit so that you know I can lead into the next section. Anyway, okay. Uh, there there are certain certain keywords that we can spot on the card that uh, by using them we can identify replacement effects. Okay. The first one is okay, skip. Okay. So if you see the word skip, okay, it replaces the event with nothing. Okay. So like for example, on this card, Damia Sage of Stone, it says skip your draw step. What happens when you skip your draw step? Remember you have your untap, your upkeep, and you have your draw, and you have your main phase one. Okay. When you skip your draw step, you, you untap your stuff, you go to upkeep, okay. you don't go to draw. The game sees that, okay, we are we are heading into draw now, but we skip this. Okay? There's nothing that happened. So your opponent can't you know flash in that long click during your draw step because there is no draw step at all. Okay, same goes with either of these. Either of these it ends well. You skip your next two turns. How it goes is me opponent me opponent me opponent. This is your usual. Turn order. Okay, when you skip my next two turns, after after my turn, I go to my, my, my opponent's turn. Okay, over here, I cast the eater of days. But over here, it will skip through it. I will never get my turn at all. all right. I I usually like to imagine this as like you know an, an, an RPG style combat combat uh, combat system. You know, like turn based. You have like A B A B A B. Okay, then you just uh, remove this two. Okay, so skip is one of the words that we can tell that, okay, uh, it is a replacement effect. It, replace, it replaces the event that's supposed to happen with nothing. Uh, other than skipping turns, skipping phases, you also see things like skip that draw. Okay, so instead of drawing, you don't do anything. Next, uh, we can look at okay, prevent. Okay, Prevention is also a replacement effect. It, it, replacements, it, it replaces a damage dealing event with nothing or something else can happen during the damage dealing event. Okay, for example, for pack leader, when pack leader attacks, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn to dogs you control. Okay, so when this replacement effect is active, any damage that will be dealt to any dogs, okay, they will be prevented, they will be replaced with nothing. Okay, so abilities that, abilities on your dogs that say, oh, when this creature is dealt damage, it won't happen. Any opponent's creatures that try to deal combat that de combat damage to a creature and has a combat damage trigger, like says, uh, whenever your uh, whenever this creature deals damage to another creature, it, it won't happen as well because uh, the damage de de dealing event is replaced with nothing. Same goes for Stormwall Capridor. If non combat damage should be dealt to Stormwall Capridor, prevent that damage. Okay, so. Other than just preventing, you also put a plus one plus one counter on Stormwall Capital for each one damage prevented this way. Okay, so th this entire thing is one event. So let's say uh, Stormwall Capital is in play and you cast Storm's Wrath that deals four damage to each creature. So the entire four damage dealing event is replaced with 
putting four plus one plus encounters on it. Okay, let's go on. The final one we uh, the final word we have to look at is regenerate. Okay, regenerate doesn't really happen uh, this often. Uh, the most recent regenerate cards are, as you can see, a reprints from older sets. Dawn Charm that is reprinted in uh, Commander, so called in Commander Legends, and Patchwork, Patchwork Gnomes that is replaced, uh, that is re reprinted in Ultimate Masters. Um, regenerate replaces okay, a creature being destroyed either by an effect or by lethal damage okay, with removing all the damage from it and tapping it. Okay. As you can see from the reminder text of Dawn Charm, okay, instead of instead of uh, destroying something, instead tap it, remove it from combat and heal all damage from it. Okay. Uh, these effects don't appear too often, uh, but I have to include it because uh, you know it might show up in certain commander games. Okay. Other, other, other words that we might see uh, that has a replacement effects are certain keyword abilities. Okay. Dredge is one of the popular ones. Dredge says, if you would draw a card, instead you may put exactly that many cards from the top of your library into your graveyard. If you do, return this card from your graveyard to your hand. Otherwise, it doesn't get replaced and you just continue drawing your card. Okay. As, as well, we have Adamant. Uh, Adamant comes from Throne of Eldraine. If at least three mana of uh, the color of the card, or spend the cast this cast this spell, it gets a replacement effect. Okay, so mm, uh, yeah, so as you can see, uh, there are these are the certain words that you can see while uh, looking for replacement effects. Okay. But but in general, what, what you can see is basically, okay, uh, these words, okay. You have noticed just now that, okay, uh, all, all the replacement effects, or most of the replacement effects will, will have these two words, okay. If, instead, or you will say, if and instead. Usually, if and instead are on continuous effects, and instead, if it's only just impact, is usually on a self-replacement effect. Right, so um, th this is one of the bigger contrasts that we have with uh, the, the, the words you spot for triggered abilities, all right? So let's look at an example. Okay, so on the left two cards, we have Dauntless Survivor. When this creature enters the battlefield, put a plasma on the entire creature. Or Korean Droid, whenever you cast a spell that is white, blue, black, or red, put a plasma on this creature. So this card says when, and this card says whenever. Okay, we we, we can contrast it with conclave conclave mental. mental. Conclave mental says, uh, as you've seen earlier, it says if counters are put on creature with control, that many plus one counters, that many plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead. Okay, so all, all these three abilities, they sort of sit around and wait for something to happen, especially like Guerin Dryad. Okay? It'll just sit around. And it will happen when uh, you, you cast a spell that is of those four colors. Conclave Mentor sits around and waits for you to put counters on uh, uh, a creature you control. So, okay, uh, we'll look at these two cards first. Okay. Both, both of the creatures are 1 1. Okay. So, what happens when the ability triggers? Okay. If the ability triggers, the abilities will go onto the stack and there will be priority generated. Meaning that after that, while the ability is on stack, you can, uh, people, uh, other players can respond to it. So for example, when you cast, uh, let's say, Donald Survivor, and let's say you target itself with the ability, your opponent can actually respond with spike kill hazard, okay, and deals one damage, and Okay, you'll, you'll be killed. So same with Quirion Dryad. When you have Quirion Dryad on a battlefield and you cast, a, let's say, a white spell, the opponent can also kill it in response. On the other hand though, uh, Conclave Mentor, okay, uh, it has a replacement effect. Okay, so let's say 
uh, when you, after you pass conclave mentor and you task the password fortification that puts a plus one plus one plus one counter on it, and your opponent wants to respond with scorching fire. Okay, so before password fortification resolves, conclave mentor is a two two. Immediately after it resolves, okay, it will already become a four four. There is no chance for your opponent. That there, there is no time where it's three three. That your opponent can resolve a scorching dragon fire for whatever reason, your opponent doesn't want to re respond to the spell, and instead he thinks that oh I can respond to putting the extra counter. He can't. Okay. So th 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 there is no room for them to uh, counter uh, to, to to kill it with complete mentor uh, after password fortification resolves. So, uh, as I mentioned just now, uh, certain replacement effects are called self-replacement effects. Okay, they replace a part of a spell or ability as it resolves. Uh, we can see this by the word instead. One of the examples is field research. It, it says, draw two cards. If this spell was kicked, draw three cards instead. Okay. So, when this spell resolves, it will check whether if you paid the kicker cost for this spell, if it does, Instead of just drawing two cards, you will just straight away replace this to drawing three cards. Okay. Same goes with Phoenix, Harder Than the Forge. It has a, a triggered ability. Whenever Phoenix or another non token creature control dies, create a 1 1 rate sitter token with the creature return block. If the creature has power 4 or greater, create two of those tokens instead. This replacement effect sits around waiting for the trigger to happen. And when a trigger tries to resolve, it will check the power of the creature that died. If it is four, instead of creating one, it will create two. Thank you, sir. All right, so, and uh, one more thing we can look at is, okay, as this card is turned face up, there are only two cards with this particular replacement effect, but, and nobody plays them. I think, uh, but we'll just put here for completion's sake. As this is turned face up, okay, uh, something happens. That is a replacement effect. All right. Uh, one of the bigger categories of replacement effects are these uh, enter the battlefield replacement effects. If I'm lazy, I'll just say ETBRE. There are four variants of these. Okay, one says something like this thing enters the battlefield with something. Uh, most often you'll see them, uh, they're entering the battlefield with counters, like uh, Stone Call Serpent, which entered the battlefield with X plus one counters on it, X being equal to whatever you declare as you cast a spell, as well as Boot, boot, uh, boot Nipper. It enters the battlefield with your choice of a Death Touch counter or Lifelink counter. Uh, if your opponent decides to let this resolve, it will come into play with the counter of your choice. Your opponent wouldn't know. Uh, what you choose uh, before it resolves. Okay. Uh, X enters the battlefield something. Okay. Uh, usually it will say this thing enters the battlefield tapped. Okay. Like for example, uh, Florence Sentinel enters the battlefield tapped. Castle Ardenvale enters the battlefield tapped unless you control the planes. Next, as X enters the battlefield, okay. for example, Umori. As Umori enters the battlefield, choose a card type, Heraldic Banner. As Heraldic Banner enters the battlefield, choose a color. Or Blood Crypt. As Blood Crypt enters the battlefield, you may choose whether you want to pay, pay to life or not. Okay. So these, uh, these cards ask for a choice as they enter the battlefield, uh, and your opponent cannot respond to these choices. Uh, Another thing to note that uh, if, if you look at Umori and Her Her Heraldic Banner, okay, they make a choice as they enter the battlefield and they will remember the choice. So if let's say somehow these cards are on the battlefield without entering the battlefield, like for example, let's say uh, you have a Mirage Mirror, you activate it, copying let's say Heraldic Banner. Uh, no choice is made. So, uh, first of all, 
your creatures won't get the person plus zero. And secondly, uh, you cannot tap it for mana. There, there is no mana of the chosen color. There is no color being chosen. X. This, uh, this card enters the battlefield as something. Usually we'll see this on copy effects. Like for example, Mirror Maid that says you may have Mirror Maid enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or enchantment on the battlefield, or like Glass Bolt Mimic or Spark Level that copies creatures. Okay, so once again, how are these uh, different from triggered effects, uh, triggered abilities? Let's look at these two similar cards, okay, and uh, let's just uh, ignore this one, uh, okay. So let's say we choose this one and this one. Okay, so these two cards are both 2-2 creatures, and they, one of them, after it enters the battlefield, it will trigger, you put a bomb up under on it. Or the other one says, and uh, enters the battlefield with two person muscle encounters on it. Okay. Okay. So, you can use shock okay, on Truffle Snout to kill it before it receives a counter. But you can't do that for Nullet Colony. Okay. Nullet Colony, when it comes in, is already a 4-4. But Truffle Snout will come in as a 2-2, and if you choose it, to put, a, to put a person on the counter on it, only then you'll become a 3 3 after the ability resolves. Okay. And also keep in mind that the choice is made as a trigger is put on the stack. So if your opponent kills it in response, you cannot say, oh, okay, uh, I'll gain the ball life instead. Okay. So in, in other words, this is how I like to exp uh, explain replacement effects. Uh, Let's say whenever player asks questions, this is how I usually like to explain it. Okay, there is no window of time. Uh, there is no window of time when a kick Nullet Colony is on the battlefield and is a two-two. Okay, when it comes in, it is already straight away a four-four. Okay, let's look at one, one one other example of this. Okay, so we have uh, Grum Gully. You control Grum Gully the generous. Each other non-human token you control enters the battlefield with an additional person person counter on it. And you also control Sigil Captain, which says whenever a creature comes into play under your control, enters a Bellevue under your control. If that creature is a 1 1, put two plus one plus counters on it. Okay? And you have an ability that spawns a, creates a goblin token. Okay? So, what happens here? Uh, goblin tokens are, not, are non humans, so Grum Gully's uh, replacement effect will replace how it enters the battlefield. So, it will enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one, okay? So there is no window of time when the goblin is on the battlefield and is a one one, okay? So uh, would Sigil Captain trigger? Sigil Captain, it has what we call an intervening if clause. Okay? So if the creature is a one one, it will trigger. If it is not a one one, okay, it won't trigger at all. You'll be like, hmm, okay, uh, I don't see any one ones around. Another thing about replacement effects in general is this, okay, it has to be on a battlefield before the event occurs. Okay, it doesn't look back in time. What do I mean by that? Okay, let's say in your graveyard, you have Orb of Dreams. It says permanence, enter the battlefield tapped, and you have a Memnite 1-1 uh, one, one vanilla. Okay. You cast open the vaults, which says return all artifacts and, en and enchantments, cards from all graveyards to the battlefield under the owner's control. Okay. So, it will bring both all of Dreams and Memnite back at the same time. Will Memnite enter the battlefield tapped? Okay, the answer is no, because all of Dream has to be already on the battlefield before it can uh, generate any replacement effects. Okay, so since both of them enter at the same time, all of Dreams isn't around to stop Memnite from coming into play untapped. Okay, so you will usually see this um, in uh, like, you usually see this kind of uh, tricky cases in reanimation effects. Okay. For example, let's say if Rhizome Lurcher is the only creature card in your graveyard, Rhizome Lurcher says it enters the battlefield with a number of plus one, plus one counters on it equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Hold on, I see the chat blinking. Let me see if there's anything. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, never mind. Okay. So, uh, you, anyway, uh, you have Rhizome Lurcher in your graveyard and you cast Rise Again to target it. Okay. Rise Again returns Rhizome Lurcher onto the battlefield. So, 
uh, before Horizon Lurcher enters the battlefield, it, it will check uh, the replacement effect will check for the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Okay. And before right, Rhizome Lurcher is on the battlefield, it is in the graveyard. So Rhizome Lurcher will actually see itself uh, being in the graveyard. And when it enters the battlefield, you will get the plus one plus one counter from itself. If you look at this, okay, you have Mirror Image and Elder Gargaroth in your graveyard and you cast Rise of the Dark Realms, okay, you will return these two creatures onto the battlefield. If let's say you don't control any creatures on the battlefield in the first place. So what, what happens here? Okay. Before Mirror Image enters the battlefield, okay, it will check for any creatures that are on the battlefield for you to copy. If there are none, you cannot use it to copy another creature that you bring back with the same effect. So uh, basically, this is a mouthful. I, I'm just putting it here because uh, there are a lot of things we have ever seen. Okay? Uh, this is the part of the comprehensive rule that governs um, how do we handle REs about things entering the battlefield. Okay? Uh, it is 614.12. Uh, I'm not going to read everything. You can read it by yourself. Uh, but if you need to remember, uh, where to look at, okay, this is the rule. Okay, let's go through it slowly. Yeah? Okay. So, uh, how do we know what replacement effects to apply when something ends the battlefield? Okay. First of all, we can check the characteristics of the permanent as they will exist on the battlefield. Okay. So, replacement effects that have already modified how it enters the battlefield. Okay. So, that means replacement effects that are uh, that the permanent that the permanent already has, like for example, Mirror Maid and Heraldic Banner, as, as we see just now. Okay. So for example, if you choose an artifact with Mirror Maid, okay, then Mirror Maid will, will enter the battlefield as an artifact and not an enchantment. So for example, Constellation won't trigger. Okay. We also have to check continuous effects from the permanent's own static abilities. Okay. For example, Thassa, has a static ability that says, as long as your devotion to blue is less than five, Thassa isn't a creature. So what, what happens, you control zero or one Thassa's Oracle, uh, the main thing is the devotion to blue, and your opponent has a Kinjali Sunwing that has a replacement effect that says, creatures your opponent's control and the battlefield tapped. Okay, so what, what will happen? Thassa is a creature spell, it resolves as a creature spell, but as it enters the battlefield, would the Sunwing apply? So remember, as, as we said, okay, we have to check the characteristics of the permanent as it will exist on the battlefield. So on the battlefield, right now, uh, you only have a devotion of one, two, three. Okay, so on the battlefield, as it enters, it won't enter as a creature. So your Tasa will enter the, will enter the battlefield untapped. Of course, if you control two Tassa's Oracles instead, you have a total of five devotion now. So Tassa will enter, will enter the battlefield as a creature, and therefore it will enter the battlefield tapped. Okay. We also check continuous effects from the permanent's own static abilities. Looks quite similar to, you know, like all, all, all these look quite similar to each other. Yeah, and, and I have a bit of hard time looking for examples. Okay, so for example, uh, Savai Triumph says the end is well with tapped. Okay. So what happens if you control Exit Jailer that says cards in the graveyard lose all abilities, okay. and you also have Crucible of Worlds that says you may play land cards from a graveyard and you choose to play Savai Tri Triumph. What happens now? Okay. So as you play Savai Triumph and it enters the battlefield, okay we will check its status on the battlefield. So it is already not in the graveyard if it is, if it exists on the battlefield. I know this is a bit different from the Rhizome Lurcher we, we, we saw earlier, but on the battlefield, it won't be affected by Exit Jailer's effect. Okay? So it will actually enter the battlefield tapped.
don't worry, this won't come out in the quiz. There's a quiz later. Okay. Or the final thing is continuous effects that already exist and would apply to the permanent. Let's say if you control arcane adaptation that uh, that is set to wolf, and you also control Arlin poison pack that says each creature control that is a wolf or werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. Okay. You cast Aegis Turtle, which is a turtle now. On the battlefield, we will see that it is a turtle wolf. So Arlin's replacement effect will replace how it enters the battlefield. So it will come in with a plus one plus one counter. Water break, everyone still me. Remember to drink your water. Right, when there are multiple replacement effects, the order that they are applied is chosen by the affected player or the affected objects controller. Okay. This can be a little bit tricky okay, because the controller of the effect might not be the affected player. Okay. And after the choice is made, it is immediately it immediately applies. Okay, unlike triggers where you decide everything, then they re, then then they resolve in reverse order. Uh, replacing effects just uh, apply straight away. Okay, uh, for example, okay, this is one of my favorite uh, commander cycles, uh, the word cycle. Okay, let's say you activate both of these. What of ways that says the next time you draw a card this turn, instead each opponent discards a card. And you have words of holding. Next time you would draw a card this turn, instead you create a 2 2 bear token. So, what happens if you activate once on each of these two and then uh, there is an effect that allows you to draw a card? Okay. So, since you are the affected player, you get, you get to pick one and only one of the replacement effects to use. So, let's say you choose to create a bear token. Okay. So, right now, uh, Words of Waste still has the replacement effect there and you, you won't get to uh, apply it unless you have another effect that allows you to draw a card this turn. Let's look at another example. Okay, uh, you control Torbrin, Thane of Great Fell, and Fiery Emancipation. Okay, Torbrin says, uh, Torbrin's re replacement effect adds two damage to any red source of control. Fiery Emancipation, uh, triples all the damage you deal. Okay? And let's say you decide to shock an unfortunate target, an unfortunate opponent maybe. Okay. So let's say you, you use it to shock your opponent, what happens here? Okay. So this is the part where we have to do a bit of math, uh, but before that we have to figure out who gets to apply the replacement effects. Okay. Even though you control the spell, if you use it to shock your opponent, your opponent will be the affected player. So they will get to choose uh, how they want to apply the replacement effects. Okay. So let's say if he decides to apply Torbrin first and then Fiery Emancipation, we'll do 2 plus 2, which is 4, multiplied by 3, which is 12. On the other hand, if he, if he decides to apply uh, Fiery Emancipation first, you do the multiplication, 2 times 3, and then you apply Torbrin plus 2 is equal to 8. Okay. So this is not up to you to choose, but for the affected player, which in this case is your opponent, to choose. Of course, if you decide to shock your opponent's creature, the controller of the affected object, which is your opponent, gets to choose as well. Okay, so uh, that is for uh, who gets to choose. And next, uh, there are certain order, there's a certain order in which we apply uh, multiple replacement effects. Okay. Uh, the, this is uh, self-replacement effects. We always apply those first. Like for example, as you've seen earlier, uh, Anex has a self-replacement effect for its trigger ability. Okay. Control replacement effects, like for example, uh, Crafty Card first. Basically, any replacement effect that has the word control in it. Next up, copy. Any replacement effect that has the word copy in it. And finally, everything else. Okay. So before you decide the order to apply, you have to apply in this order first. Let's look at an example. Okay. Uh, I control Divine Visitation. I'm going to cast Separating Migration and I'm going to kick it. But in response to the spell, my opponent casts uh, Crafty, uh, flashes in Crafty Cutpurse. Okay. Crafty Cutpurse says when Crafty Cutpurse enters the battlefield, 
each opponent that will be created under an opponent's control, this term is created under your, uh, under your control instead. So in this case, the opponent's control. What happens here? Okay. Uh, we look at each of the replacement effects. So, uh, okay. so as you can see, this one is self-replacement effect. This one is a control replacement effect. And this one is neither of these, so it is an other. So you apply this first. You apply the self first. So, in, so right now we know that instead of two separate links, we make four separate links. Okay. Then we apply this one. So instead of creating them under your control, these will go to your opponent. So after this go to your opponent, we will see that okay, this doesn't apply because divine visitation only creates it under your control. Next up is another corner case. Okay. Instead of crafting cards, what happens is the opponent casts gathering specimens instead. Gathering specimens phase, if a creature would enter the battlefield under an opponent's control this turn, it enters the battlefield under your control instead. So we notice that there are the, 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 the difference between these two cards are that there is a small difference instead. Okay, both are control, it is control, it is also control, both replacing the effect of control. But this one replaces the creation, and this one replaces the enter the battlefield. Okay. Do we have a rule that uh, separates the uh, that differentiates the, these two effects? Yes, yes, there is. It is rule 701.6b. If a replacement effect applies to a token being created, that applies that effect applies before considering any continuous effects that will modify the characteristics of that token. But if it applies to a token enter, entering the battlefield, okay, you apply anything that create you apply any effects that creates the token first. Only then you apply the uh, replacement effect that changes how it enters the battlefield. So if you look at this, what happens is uh, this one. This one will happen first. Same thing, you create your four separate links. Okay. But in this case, this will happen first. Even though there is controller, this will happen later. This will happen first because this happens during creation. Okay. So you make them into angels first. Pretend that these are wings. Okay. You will make the angels first. Only then they will go under your opponent's control and your opponent will get four, four, four angels. All right, so um, that is about uh, handling multiple replacement effects. Finally, we'll move on to the last section of this thing. How do we um, un answer players' questions? Okay. Uh, especially nowadays, uh, we get a lot of players uh, asking questions in a group or asking online. And of course, there are you know, people who try to be helpful and try to answer them. Okay. Of course, we can't stop them help from helping other people, but of course, we have to make sure that they, they, they use the, first of all, they have to understand uh, the concepts and secondly they have to use the correct terminology okay replacement effects they work a little bit different from the other effects okay so just to recap okay, they don't use a stack okay so uh, if you see any uh, any we'll talk about it later okay so first of all they don't use a stack it doesn't require priority and they cannot be responded to okay and uh how they how we apply them is by ap and ap order but they happen immediately okay and Again, uh, it's not like after you choose, then someone gets to respond. Nobody gets to respond to them. And okay, finally, the affected player and not the controller of the effect chooses the order how to apply these effects. So one of the main um, inspirations that I got from creating this section was when I saw someone ask this question in a Facebook group. Okay. Hey guys, I have a question. If I have both Torbrand and Fire Emancipation on the field and both my opponent, how much damage am I dealing? Okay, is both getting double or triple separately? Okay, uh, question not really nicely uh, nicely worded. Why, why do you get a double? You don't double it. You plus two. Okay, but anyway, you get a gist of the question and also we sort of discussed this, discussed this just now. Okay, so you all should know the correct answer. The affected player, the opponent, gets to choose how do you apply them. Do we apply them with plus two? Then times three, so 15, or we times three first, then plus two, which is 11. Okay. Uh, if your opponent is a masochist, he might choose 15, but otherwise, uh, usually people will choose to deal 11 damage. Okay. Let's look at how some, some of the players, uh, some of the other players, uh, I'm assuming that they are non judges, how they apply. Okay. 
As you can see, 200 over comments on one, uh, one question. It is, uh, and, and th there aren't 274 different answers to this question, but somehow it just generated this many, you know, uh, this, this many comments. Okay. Someone says, you can pick the order that the triggers go on the stack. So if trigger, Torben triggers first, you do 15. In, in, if Emancipation triggers first, 11. Okay, so what did he get right? What did he get wrong? Okay, we see that he got right the part where he says that, yes, you can either choose to deal 15 or 11. But the wrong part is, okay, first of all, they are not triggers. So as you can see, there's a terminology mistake. Uh, they don't go on a stack because they're not triggers. And you, as in the player casting the boat, shouldn't be the one choosing. Okay, so as, as you can see, uh, he's, he got the answer sort of correct, but uh, the, the, the way he used his terminology was wrong. Okay, let's look at the other one. Someone said, Bolt deals nine, Torbern deals six, which equals 15. Okay, so this is totally wrong. And as you can see, someone, somebody angry reacted to it. Okay. Someone says, regardless of how you order it, it's 15 damage. Okay. So luckily, this is an online exchange. So imagine what happens okay, if you hear this exchange in a tournament setting. Okay. You, you hear two of them talking, okay, and the, the opponent casts the ball, and then the affected player says, oh, what do I do? I have 12 life. Can I survive? Okay. And this guy says, oh, regardless of how you order it, it's 15 damage. Okay. Do you, do you, should you interfere in this case? Is there any infraction or penalty? Is it, is it up to you to tell the players? I, I'm pretty sure we talked about it last time, but I can't remember what's the, yeah, what's the uh, answer, but we can talk about it later. I'm a bit short on time now. Uh, anyway, uh, finally, uh, just to hone your rules, uh, your, your, your rules knowledge at this, at this kind of, at, at, at this point in time where we, where we don't have, uh, we don't have any regular or sanctioned tournaments. Uh, what you can do is uh, you can always check out this uh, group. It is not my group. I believe it is created by Phil uh, uh, from, from Philippines, uh, facebook.com slash MTG Ask the Judge. You can always go there and check okay, uh, for any rules, rules questions to uh, just hone your ability on how to answer the players' questions. Okay. Uh, one thing you have to note that uh, the judges there, they are very fast. It's like sometimes post one minute, you get like three three correct answers already. Okay, so uh, it is sort of a game to be the to be the first to answer the questions. All right, uh, with that, that is the end of my uh, presentation. Uh, thanks to everyone for your attention. Uh, thanks to Sugan for presenting it before. Uh, I'm I'm basing this presentation off his. Thanks to thanks to Ben for last time check for me. Thanks to you, you win this time check for me. And oh, sorry. Are you two the same people? <laughs> I didn't change it from last. I, I believe it's by uh, somebody else. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, that is the end uh, of my presentation. Uh, anybody has any questions? If not, I will be posting the link to the. Uh, to the quiz, uh, don't worry. We, if you have been paying attention to the quiz, it is all the questions from the presentation itself. There's nothing new. If you have paid attention, you should be able to answer them. And yeah, that's that's all for me for now. All right, so Patrick. Okay, from, thank you, Z, for your wonderful presentation. Yeah, that, there's, a, there's a question. Should I answer that first? All right, so how do we identify replacement effects that worded like the exile effect from opposite, opposition agent? Let's look at opposition agent. Uh, opposition agent. Okay, opposition agent says you control your opponent okay, in a mind. While an opponent is searching their library, they exile each card they find. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast them. Mm. 
nothing is being replaced here, isn't it? Your, your opponent is still the one searching your library, but you are the one making the decisions for them. You, you remember like just now, uh, when you look at how we identify uh, replacement effects, we look at word, words like instead, okay, we look at words like skip, draw, prevent. Okay. Uh, not, none of them appear on this card, and uh, th there, is, there isn't any replacement effects here. It, it, it's just that. It's, it's just that you are the one making your decisions for your opponents. Yeah, so there is no uh, replacement effect here. Yeah, uh, like Michael said, okay, this is a control effect. It's not a replacement effect. Nothing is being replaced here. Okay, what happens when there is multiple hall breacher in play? On the placements. If not, then I've already sent the link to everyone for the uh, quiz questions. So, all right. What happens when there's multiple hall bridges in play? This is from Nikolesh. Okay, uh, Hobbiger says, if an opponent would draw a card, accept the first one they draw in each of the draw steps. Instead, you create a creature token. Okay, so there's a replacement effect, yes. Uh, what happens? Good question. Usually people, is, usually people ask about multiple opposition effects, uh, multiple opposition agents, uh, but multiple Hull Breacher. Uh, I believe what happens is, first of all, is a replacement effect. Secondly, we'll see that, okay, it is the, mm, what do you call it? It is uh, the, replay, uh, the, the, the affected player should be the one, uh, should be the one choosing. Mm. Sorry, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, I, I'm assuming we're talking about a multiplayer game. Let's say A, A has Halbreacher, B and C both have, uh, sorry, A is drawing a card, B and C both have Halbreacher. What happens? Well, instead you create, so, so who gets to choose? So who, who is the affected player here? The affected player is, is it is it the opponent? Since he doesn't get to draw. I believe so, right? The, the, the player who gets to draw should be the affected player, right? Chris says, yeah, the player who's supposed to draw, it, it, it feels like he, that player should be the affected player. Yeah, so that's the event being replaced, so that should be the affected player, so the affected player gets to choose who gets the token. Uh, all right. Uh, Anything else? I'm sweating buckets here already from that sudden question. Um, I guess uh, that should be that should be all from me. Uh, Y'all can spend the last three minutes uh, filling up the the uh, quiz. I hope it shouldn't be too hard. And yeah, I think that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention, and have a good rest of the morning and good rest of the conference.